Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and today I'm going to show you how I created my first set of cards using the March 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, get a couple tips and see what I made. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared a look at and the link to download the latest sheet load of cards for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. If you haven't seen that video yet and you want to download the free printable, I do have a link in the description box below to yesterday's video so you can find out how to do that. Today, I'll be sharing with you the process of how I created the first set. Also today, my team of collaborators will be sharing their first set of cards with you. We have collaborators here on YouTube, over on Instagram, and on blogs. Everybody is linked in that description box below. So once you're done with my video, I really hope that you'll go visit all of their sites and leave them some love. Before I get started on the process today, I'll share with you the main supplies that I'm going to use. And then once I start the voiceover and the process, if I add anything else, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, always just leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my focal points today, I got out my Spellbinder Circle Nestability sets in small and large, as well as two stamp sets. The first one was this sailboat stamp set from Inka Dinka Do, and then for my sentiment, I got out this Mona Lisa Moments from Cornish Heritage Farms. Unfortunately, these are not in production any longer, but I'm hoping that you have in your stash some stamp sets you can use to fit your papers and the theme of your cards. The one thing I love about this set is there is a sentiment for just about anything. Now, if you know of a stamp set similar to this that is still in production, if you wouldn't mind leaving the company name and stamp set name in the comments, that might help some other subscribers out if they're looking for something similar. I will be using two Gina K Designs ink spots to stamp my sentiment and my images today. This is Cherry Red and In the Navy. For my cardstocks, I chose an off-white for my sentiment circles. For my sentiment circle mat and the border strip, I chose this dark blue. And to switch it up a little bit for the card bases, I chose Craft. I thought this would go well with the papers and there is some of the same shade of brown in some of the ores. Speaking of ores, I will be making a masculine set of cards today because I was asked a couple weeks ago um, by a subscriber about masculine sheet loads and I had only made one other one so I thought that this would be a good time to give it a try. I picked up these two pieces of pattern paper at my local scrapbook store and it is from the Authentique Voyage Collection. Now I'm not sure if this is still in production. If it is, I will try to find it and link it in the description box. I just liked these oars here and then I chose a red and white stripe to go with that for my second pattern paper. Let's get crafty! The first thing I'm going to do today is cut my two pattern papers per the cutting guides. Now if you do have a certain orientation you need your papers to go on the cards, you will want to pay attention to this when cutting. The stripe paper I'll cut first and I want the stripes to go vertically onto the card so that's how I'll start my cutting. What I'm going to do is cut three strips that are three and three quarters inches wide first. Once I have all three of those cut, I'm going to rotate those pieces and the first two strips get cut into squares that are three and three quarter inches tall and I just cut until I have six of those. Four 
for that third strip of pattern paper, once again I will rotate that and I will cut until I get six pieces that are one and a half inch tall. Now you might notice that I'm using the one and a half inch mark to the left of the cutting line. This is just easier for me than having to pick it up and move it every time. I will be cutting the second piece of pattern paper in the same way, but because of how I want the orientation to go, I need to cut off that branding strip before I can go in and cut my three strips of three and three quarters inches wide. While I'm cutting this second piece, I thought it would be a good time to stop by with a reminder about my Share the Love giveaway. If you are watching this video before March 14th, 2021, you do still have time to get your entries in. I will be giving away $150 in prizes in honor of my 15th thousand subscriber. Six lucky subscribers will each win a $25 gift card to an online store of their choice. And if I hit 17,500 subscribers by March 14th, I'm going to add in a seventh gift card. Make sure to check out the detail video that I have linked in the description box below to find out how you can get entered. Once I had all of the pattern papers cut, I brought in my six pieces of craft cardstock to cut and fold my card bases. All I do for this is cut these pieces in half to four and a quarter inches wide, and then they get folded in half for a top fold card base. Now normally I don't show this process, but I have gotten some questions lately, and I guess I just took it for granted that everybody knew how to make a card base, but that is not the case, so I wanted to show you here today. Next, I brought in that blue card stock so I could cut my pieces for CS1. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the pieces for the border strips, and I just cut three pieces off the bottom of each card stock that was a one inch strip. Now, the rest at the top I will cut down later for die cutting, but for now, I'm just going to cut those six strips total, and then I put those together, I double them up, and cut them in half to four and a quarter inches wide. I will eventually be adding a decorative border to the bottom of each of those pieces I just cut with this border punch. But if you don't want a decorative edge, you can always just cut these to one half inch tall instead, or you can cut it to an inch tall and use decorative scissors or border dies. Anything that you have that is up to you, make these cards your own. Because the leftover part of the blue cardstock will be too big to go into my cuddle bug, I brought in the die that I was going to use on this and I cut three strips out of each of those cardstocks for die cutting later. I then did the same thing with my off-white cardstock for my focal point. Now for this, you don't have to use a whole sheet of paper. You could definitely use scraps if you have it. And I just cut this again into three strips that would fit that circle die. I brought back in that border punch so I could put that decorative edge on the bottom of each of my blue cardstock pieces. I always tried to center my piece left to right for that first punch just so everything ends at almost the same spot on the left and right sides. Now you'll see there I did miss a little piece with my punch. I just put that back in, moved it over a little bit further, and then I could finish that. The punch that I'm using today, I believe it was from EK Success, and it might have been called Postage Stamp Edger. I cannot find them for sale, like brand new. I did find some on eBay, but you do not have to use this or a scallop. You can just use whatever you have available. Next, I brought in my trusty cuddle bug so I could do some die cutting. The first cuts I did were the circles out of the off-white and the blue cardstock. I just kept cutting until I had 12 of each size circle. Because my focal point will be stamped on that off-white circle, I brought in this little fishtail banner die from Lawn Fawn, and I will be using some scraps of off-white cardstock to cut pieces for my sentiments. Now this little case that I have in front of me, it is a 5x7 photo case, and I just keep scraps of white and off-white cardstock in here. It's super handy when you need little pieces for stuff like this. 
I did end up cutting two pieces of cardstock at a time with this die. Now one of them did get some texture in the back of it because of my cutting plates, but I think it just added to the character. I just cut these until I had 12 total fish tails. Once the die cutting was done, it was time to start stamping my focal points. Now these will look a little bit different. I will be stamping six of them with a large red sailboat and then a smaller blue sailboat in the background. And then I will be stamping the other six just in reverse. The bigger boat will be blue and the smaller boat will be red. Now for the small boat in the background, I did do a stamp off before I brought it to my focal point. I just thought this helped a little bit with like the field of depth, so it did look like that boat was further away. Next, it was time to stamp the sediments. I ended up choosing three different sediments and I stamped them in red twice and in blue twice. Now, since I can't see through these sediment stamps like clear stamps, I did get out a block that had some pre-printed grids on it. This way I could align the words on that grid. And then when I went to take it to my little fishtail banner, I could use one of those other lines to help me get it straight across in there. While I finished stamping the sediments, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. I just love it when I can find out a little bit more about each of you. Now today's question is kind of craft related, kind of not. I want to know if you have a favorite snack or drink you like to have when you're crafting. I would love for you to leave your answer in the comment section below. And don't forget if you do to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you answered the question. For me, um, I usually only snack if it's something like if I were doing an online crop where it's not like for a video and my favorite snacks would probably be sugary things like Starburst, um, Skittles. Here just recently I discovered high chews and I love those. For my drinks, I definitely always have a Diet Coke. My favorite is McDonald's Fountain Diet Cokes. I love those, don't know what makes them taste so good. Now with drinking, you know as crafters, we always have to make sure that we're not leaving those drinks too close to our projects. For my focal point, I wanted to add one more fishtail banner to the right of the circle to go with my sentiment banner. So I just brought in some of the scraps of pattern paper and I cut six of those same banners from each of those patterns. You might have noticed on the sketch that piece B has the two bottom corners rounded. So I brought in my We Are Memory Keepers corner chomper and I used the quarter inch side to just round those bottom two edges. Now this is optional if you don't have a corner rounder or you don't want to round the corners, you can just skip this part. Or if you have a different decorative corner punch you want to use, you can do that as well. Now that all of the base pieces are ready, I can start to put the cards together. The first thing I did was put piece A in the top center of the card base, and then I added adhesive to the back of piece B and placed that right below this. Now, this did end up with a little less space than I wanted at the bottom. The borders weren't quite even. So for the next one, when I placed piece B, I ended up kind of overlapping it a little bit with piece A. Later, that is going to be covered up by the border strip, so nobody will notice. I continued in this same way until all 12 of the card bases had pattern paper on them. Once all of the pattern paper was in place, I then brought back in those border strips and adhered those across the cards. Now, some of these were a little bit too long for the card base, so if I found that later, I just snipped off that extra with some little scissors. I brought in my art glitter glue with that fine tip point so I could get my fishtail pieces put together. 
I put a triangle of glue on the bottom of the pattern paper fishtail and then I brought in the sediment fishtail and I adhered these together matching up that top left corner and then just kind of angling it down so you can see some of that pattern paper. I matched up the blue sediment with the red stripe paper and the red sediment with the ore paper. While those pieces were drying under a stamp block, I brought in my circles and I placed my sailboat stamped piece onto the center of each of the blue pieces. Because these cards are pretty flat so far, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarter inch width and I put two pieces of that on the back of each of the blue circles. When I placed it onto the card, I did pretty much put it all the way to the left as far as I could because I knew my sediments would need some extra space. When I placed the sailboats, the red sailboat that was big got put with the ore pattern paper on the top and the blue sailboat got placed with the red striped pattern paper on the top. Once the sediments had time to dry, it was time to get these cards put together. Now the sediments at the length they were now wouldn't fit on the card front, so I just cut off a little bit at an angle so it would slide underneath that circle and still fit within that four and a quarter inches across. When I matched up the focal point to the stamped pieces, if the sailboat was red, it got a navy sediment, which means that the striped pattern was the fishtail behind the sediment and that is the piece that was at the bottom. If it had a blue sailboat, it was just the opposite. It had a red sediment and then the ore paper for the fishtail behind it. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit all of my collaborators who are linked in that description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.